my balls? Rob can't find his balls. They're behind your overgrown shaggy bush, my love. It's so thick and bushy. I can't see them. Ew. If your bush is overgrown, it's time to trim your hedge with the Manscaped lawnmower. The Manscaped lawnmower features skin safe technology to reduce cuts, nicks, and snags when trimming your sensitive parts. Oh, this feels great. And it's waterproof, so you can trim the hedges, rain or shine. Thanks, babe. There's a reason why over a million men trust Manscaped. Order your lawnmower now at manscaped.com. And for a limited time, get a free pair of Manscaped boxers, free shipping, and a free shed travel bag. Sweet sassy molassy! I found my balls! That's great! I knew you would find them in there somewhere. Gentle on the balls, babe. Huh? <laughs> What are you trying to accomplish and what makes you happy? It ain't about the money. It's not about the brand. It's not about any of that. It's about did I move the people. Howie Lee, CEO and founder of USG Fight Gear. At USG Fight Gear, we take extreme pride in what we do to ensure you with the highest quality of custom designed fight gear and with your day-to-day -day training gear. Because of our prestige quality, our boxing gloves and MMA gloves have been approved by this. Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today, the podcast is brought to you as always by USG Canada. They make some of the finest combat sports gear in the game. These gloves I actually designed, Steve. You might like these. You like winning? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I still Yes, support. sir. Check those out. Also, if you are a combat sports athlete and you have sponsors and you got to sew those shitty patches on your shorts every fucking time you get in the ring, they weigh down your shorts. They feel like shit. All of these sponsors that are on these shorts are all printed into the fabric, which is very cool. So there's no patches, there's no bulkiness, and uh, they're very stylish. So check them out. It's Howie at usgcanada.com. Send him an email. They also have a website launching soon. You can use the promo code, the final shot, and save 10% on your purchase. Also, we are brought to you by Sovereign Extracts. If you like to get high as giraffe pussy, this is the shit that you want to get, the THC drops. If you're more into recovery and feeling good about yourself, the one-to-one -one drops are the way to go. It's 50% THC, 50% CBD. Also, if you like the vape tips, these are 100% CBD. These are the ones I rock with because I don't like to get high because I get weird and I start shutting the blinds and shit. I get paranoid. <laughs> but uh, you guys will be able to purchase all the Sovereign Extract stuff on the USG website. Use the promo code Final Shot and you will save 10%. Uh, also brought to you by the clinch fight shop the best fight shop in edmonton alberta is the clinch fight shop go in there and make a purchase if you make a purchase online use the promo code the bad guy and you're going to save 10 percent on your purchase and remember if you spend over a hundred dollars shipping is free which shipping is a big cost right now with this fucking bullshit that went on shipping prices have went through the roof so you got to send a hat in the mail it cost me 27 goddamn dollars to send that fucking thing so make sure you spend 100 bucks and save 10 percent on your purchase uh, and as always we are brought to you by on it if you're not on it get on it at onit.com forward slash tfs podcast and save 10 percent alpha bearing zoom Trim tech sport elk bars battle ropes maces t-shirts oh they got camping mugs on there you can get anything at onit.com so hit them up uh, use the promo code the final shot and save 10% on your purchase if you guys are on YouTube you can see my guest he's been on here a half a million times he is my favorite guest of all time a former guest of the year uh, current uh, WBC francophone title holder and he is fighting April 17th against Matthew G times Jermaine ladies and gentlemen Steve the Dragon Claggett how's it going brother I'm happy to be here brother it's good to see you again yeah, man, it's been a while. Uh, we took a little while off the podcast to get situated in the new home, but we're back in full force, and it seems people were really itching for it. We've had 
Dylan Carmen on. We had uh, a buddy of yours, Josh Wagner. He came on the podcast. He's fantastic. Wags. That guy's an animal. Yes, he is. And now Wags is on a, on a tear right now. There's a funny thing that happens when you get fighters motivated. Yeah. They'll break through walls and they'll they'll storm up mountains. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's part of the thing that gets us in the game, right? Well, he's fighting on the best promotion in Canada right now. The only promotion that's running in Canada, that's Eye of the Tiger. And yes, speaking, speaking of Eye of the Tiger, I got your boss on next week, so don't talk too much shit about him. No, I've never said anything <laughs> bad to the boss, man. And happy birthday, Camille. Yeah, happy birthday. It's a great, it's a, it's a great day. We're recording on his birthday, so that's uh, – and he just made a purchase with his with his daughter. They bought a hockey team. Yeah. Amazing expansion growth um going this way if only everyone's perspective was like this you right. never know how far we could grow well we'll talk i'll talk to him about that because then we can get the 411 on it but you have a big rematch coming up april 17th against g time um, a, a fight that i actually thought that you won and i thought it was pretty self-explanatory if you go back and watch the fight guys on punchinggrace.com you can watch it um, the fight was pretty self-explanatory. I thought you won most of the rounds, but uh, they called it a draw. Now you get the rematch in the tournament of tournaments, the Four Aces tournament. Yep, and this is a fight that I've been looking, or waiting for, and I I wanted it so <laughs> bad for two years now. And it was one of those ones where at the the first fight, I, I'll I, there's no excuses in the fight game, so nothing that you ever say fixes yesterday yeah if that makes sense but the first fight i didn't i didn't do what i know that i can do so i've been waiting and hoping and wishing for an opportunity to do it again and now here we are and then uh the beautiful thing about this one is that matthew wants to fight as well so we're both coming in with um some certainty and and everybody wants this fight and both of us are gunning for it so let's see who's gonna bring it on the night it's an interesting fight because you fought Teru and absolutely stomped him. That wasn't you beat the shit out of that guy. I felt bad for him actually because he he quit. Yeah, it was. Like, if you fight me on the inside, you're gonna have a tough time. Yeah, I knew he's gonna fight me on the inside. He's gonna bum rush me. Um, I can't remember if we talked about this on the last one, but I didn't really warm up for that fight because of the whole the whole maybe this guy's fighting i don't know yet we're not all in the same room everybody's uh separated yeah. so i had no idea when i was fighting and all of a sudden i was up and i went out the, out there and i mean if there was ever a chance to catch me cold that would have been it yeah. and he sprinted at me from the fu- the first bell and you know it was it was uh it was the right game plan but i was mentally dialed in so he fought me in my game plan in the end of it because i like fighting on the inside and then it made for a high action packed fight, but I could fight like that all night. Yeah, that's your kind of that's your style of fighting. You beat the yeah. brakes off of him, and then uh, Ulysses and G Time fought the same night, and Ulysses made yeah. work of G Time, but it was it looked easy. Yeah, Eve's kind of that one was interesting. I didn't know that they had such a uh, rivalry or beef. Yeah. <laughs> there was bad blood in that one, but the, passions ignite when you're gonna fight. And so I don't know what the deal is. I thought they knew each other, but apparently they know each other in the wrong way because they wanted to. Even you see Eve's walking him down, kind of like talking to him, saying stuff to. Yeah. You can see the the intensity in that. Um, but that being said, wow. that, that doesn't make me that doesn't change my mind on Matthew. I still, um, you know, in fact, it makes him more dangerous now. Because when you take a fighter and you back him into a corner, he's going to put everything on the line. So that's why this is an enticing fight for me because I kind of live like everything's on the line. You know me? Yeah. And I'm kind of, um, I don't know, I, I, I want it. I, like, I, I, this is a fight that I really, really want. And now I know that he really wants this fight too. So it, it, it leads for some anticipation. It makes it exciting when both sides are fired up like this watch and see on fight night we'll see who really brings it on fight night uh, it'll be interesting to see what g time comes up because it, it, he he got beat up bad it, it'll be it's interesting to see how he can rebound from that 
and then yep. it'll be fun to see how you you're coming off such a, a dominant performance because you can just take that momentum and roll right into the next one where he right. has to he has to pull up his pants and, and kind of get back on the horse hey well but this is a this is um this is something that fight sports taught me i guess yeah. think about judo okay in judo you almost if you're getting taken you use their momentum and then you flip it on them and you spin it so you can take someone's ground by giving them the illusion that they have so i'm not going to overlook um a really fired up fighter. You know what I mean? I, I think that G times probably Matthew's probably sitting in his house fired up. He really wants it. Yeah. And honestly, between me and you, that's who I want to beat. I want to beat that guy. I don't want to beat the guy who's like, you know, hurt ankle or he had an excuse about it. No, no, no. I want to beat the best G time because that's, that's, that's who, you know, that's who I am. And then the best part about it is that's who he's going to bring. So this is just an exciting fight for me, man. And, you know, every fight's their own thing. So don't worry about the, the Eve's loss. Let's see what he does with the, the dragon coming in hot. That's not, not a good day. <laughs> that's, what, that's all I'll say. Um, so what's on the line this time? Obviously, points in the tournament. Are you going to be defending the francophone belt? I believe so. Okay. I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um but um, as far I, I don't know yet. I'm just staying in the gym. Let's put everything on the line. That was the last. Camille told me before the last fight. He said we're going to get as many belts, as many titles, as much as we can on the line because we want the magnitude of the event to grow and grow and grow. So with the more notice that we get, the better it will be. And let's see what we can get. I guess let's see what we can make it for. This is your last fight. When they announced the fight, it was supposed to be a different belt than the francophone belt. I think it was a WBA and ABA title that was that was supposed to be up. And then I seen you with a green belt. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I um, I didn't know either. To tell you the truth, I I, I knew I knew when the at the weigh-ins. I knew when I saw the belt. I was that's a green one. I told my buddy Lee, I was like, that's the WBC one. That's one that I. I love the NABA belt. I would, I would have been just as excited, but you know, as soon as I saw it, that's when I knew. And then now I'm ranked by the WBC again. So again, I mean, <laughs> I believe I was always ranked because I had the youth title yeah. um, a couple of years back, but I, I probably jumped up in the rankings with this one. So do you still have those, those red belts, the IBF ones? Yes, sir. But I don't know the rules. If you haven't defended it for a year, I think you relinquish the title and it's now vacant. Yeah. But I mean, it's a weird game to tell you the truth. This is why you see so many fights with the, you know, thirteen belts on the line. There's a there's a, a super champion now. There's a gold champion. There's a regular. There's too much, I think, because it takes away the integrity of the championship. <laughs> then it's like it's if true. everyone can just have one, it kind of it kind of ruins it. But at the same time, it's a business as much as anything else. And um, that's kind of, uh, we'll see what happens. But these gold championships and super champions, uh, it's, a, it's a weird look. It's kind of funny because you got 13 belts in your closet and none of them hold up your pants, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, but you're, They're fun the, to the, carry around, though. <laughs> yeah, the, the belts go on the shoulders. Only yeah. one on the waist. Yeah, only one. Um, so, because the belts are funny, because you fought for a world title, it was a WBA Gold World Championship, which would have ranked you as the number one contender. Is that what it does? That, so that's that's how Eve's, it works. Yeah, that's where Eve's at. Yeah, I feel like I won that fight. I'm you really kind of. There's another one that down the road we'll get to, but that's <laughs> not on the plate right now. So, I, I, in hindsight, it's always funny because when you go through it, the intensity of the moment, you don't realize the magnitude of. It. Yeah. And then after the fact, you look back, whoa, that was for the ranking for the number one spot to fight for a, a world title. I was just fighting. <laughs> I just thought I was getting ready for a fight. And then that, that's both the difficulty and the simpleness of it. You have to, you want to fight for the biggest belts ever, but you have to be able to keep it completely simple. Focus on what you're good at. Do the, the stuff in the gym, do the work. This is what you focus on because I've had fights before when I was so caught up in all the promo and back and forth stuff that I almost forgot about the jab to the head, jab to the body, 
yeah. slip when he threw it. I forgot about tactical application of you know boxing skill, and I got too caught up in the hype, which is probably going to happen more and more nowadays with all the social media stuff. That's my job. No, with, hey, with <laughs> me, with me, I've already checked me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've hit the wall. I broke through. I, I, I kind of. I saw the wound and now I know it, but yeah. I'm saying in the world of social media, you better believe that everyone's going to get caught up in the hype many, many, many times in the next couple of years. You're going to see so many fighters get reality checked. And as much as you, you do want to see it. I don't know. You don't want to see it, but you do want to see it. It's tough. As long as nobody, you know, you don't want the worst for anyone. So I love the reality check because I got it once or twice in the yeah. game of boxing. <laughs> but when it happens to others, you, you watch from the sideline, you like it, but you know, nothing permanent. And then yeah. it's all good. So do you know if Teru is still involved in the tournament or not? Is he? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I know that there was talk a little while ago of him, like maybe wanting to retire. And then the tournament came up and he was like, yeah, shit, throw me in. But after that fight, I was more concerned as what if he was going to continue on. Maybe this is a Camille question for next week. Yeah, maybe because oh well, yeah, I, I don't know. But this is where I'm fo I'm focused like this. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can't worry about the fighter beside me. I got to focus on the fighter in front of me. Because I thought that Ulysses and Teru would have fought on the same card. That's that's the only only reason. But I'm Eves, but Eves is having some kind of neurological issue. I saw an article uh -oh. about this that came out. It was on it was on uh, Boxing Quebec and it was on all these pages and stuff. And they said that he's ha he's going he's got to get checked up. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah, because well, that's the thing, right? Like this is what I said before. I can't remember where I said it. I, I said it to a friend of mine, but it's like boxing is life, but life is bigger than boxing. So yeah, he's my rival in the fight. And I want to get them. I want to trust me. I want to get them. But outside in, in life, I want them to be okay. I don't want anyone to be, you know what yeah. I mean? Brain stuff's no joke. Yeah, so you don't good. want, yeah, hopefully they just sorted it out. He'll be okay. Get his stuff together. We can, we can have our rematch down the road, <laughs> but uh, we want health first. We want health first. Well, I always figured it was going to be you two in the finals for all the marbles. So that's, it would uh, the storyline would make sense, right? So yeah. now I guess I gotta. Well, that's the vision in my mind as well. Yeah. So that means that I gotta handle the the task at hand, and um, beat uh beat a motivated G time. That's well, what that's the job. As per the last time we talked, you had switch camps. You you went over to Legacy Boxing, I believe it was. You're still there. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, you got a head coach. I have a team okay. of, of, you know, guy, my my guys, my friend, my close. I have a combination of people with expertise in the sport and my closest friends. So I have a group of people around me that is, like, we're a team, and I, I kind of have. Um, you ever seen Terrence Crawford do that where they have the different coaches with a bunch of, yep. you know, each round that different guy will come in maybe and they, they come in for different purposes according to what's going on in the fight. And that's what we're creating. And it's working. It's Are working you? right now. Our, our, our momentum in the gym is going crazy. So we'll Are see the final product soon. Are you calling the shots or is there somebody else calling the shots? No, I'm not calling the okay, shots. Good. We we discuss because you can't. In the heat of the moment, you need clear vision, and yeah. often you get too like when you got adrenaline going, you're kind of an idiot, which means you can be thinking, "He hit me. I gotta get. I gotta land that exact same whatever. It doesn't matter." But you need clear-minded, level-headed, um, a trainer, a, a second set of eyes that can be like, "Well, actually, when he's doing that." He's really exposing for this, or he's really looking for that. So you need you need the eyes. You can't you can't think that you're the the be all end all of everything. That's not how it works. Boxing's a an individual sport, but it's a team sport. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you answered it that way because if you had said you were the boss, I was just about to turn this podcast off and give you shit. <laughs> no, I hey, I have ruined my life before. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've crashed and burned in the sport of boxing 
learning my way more than once. And I know you can't take the whole thing on your plate because I've done that before. Yeah. It's like you never know how much you carry until you carry too much. And then you learn, oh, I shouldn't have tried to do uh, the promoting and negotiating and, you know, uh, getting ready for the fight all at once. It doesn't work like that. So you can't you can do yourself it. Up. <laughs> yeah, you can't do yeah, it. Yeah, so dele- delegate tasks and work with people who you trust and who have expertise in the field that you need. So you're sitting now, you've had a very long boxing career. Like when you, somebody goes on box rack and they see Steve Claggett, who's 29, six and two, that's a yeah. long, long record. But when I, every time I talk to you, you seem like you're brand new. Like yeah, you're, you're O and O or you're two and O and you're just, you're ready, ready to go. Um, I believe because motivation comes from within. And then, funny enough, I, I always think about that. I look, I'm not 37 pro fights? Yeah. I never I never noticed. I, I was like, I was so focused on getting ready for the fight that I didn't realize that I have done 36 before. And it was just kind of one of those things. When you're going through it, you're so in the moment that you don't. I guess that's how I know I'm doing the right thing. Because I, I really love it. And I get in there and I don't even notice. Like, I'm just all lit. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'm terrified and I hate it as much as I love it. But that's, I think, the balance. Yeah. And then um, it's not like I hate it. I hate some of the things that have to happen or have to be done. Um, but looking back, I'm like, well, it's because I started at 19. I turned pro at 19 years old. 2008. Was... Yeah. That's a really and long that... time ago. Yeah. That is, <laughs> in hindsight, everything seems crazy because I remember being like, I drove up to Edmonton for my own professional debut i drove up by myself and i like went and got medicals i had to get a cat scan done that week i had to get like i didn't know what i was going through and i remember i got there and i was like a kid and then everyone like people to just the official like how things are done i learned a lot about how the game goes and like this happened and people said that i remember distinctly some guy said to me he asked me who i'm fighting i said this guy brandon carlick he said oh he's a murderous puncher and I and I, I remember like my heart. I was like, <clears throat> and then he's like, no, nah, no, nah, he's he's kind of stiff. He's an MMA guy here. And I was like, oh man, he's. Scared. But I realized what little things like that can do to you on 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 fight week. And I learned the game early because I had a lot of things happen to me. And I think that's a blessing now because now when stuff happens, oh, the other teams or the other opponents the opponent's team is like uh, rushing me or yelling at me or stuff. I mean, that's happened before. I know what to do. Yeah. They can't fight me. You know, they can <laughs> yell all they want. You can't fight me. You're not allowed to, but uh, tricks of the trade. And then I'm, I'm a hands-on experienced guy. So I think that's the way to learn in boxing well, or in fight sports. Let's get into this G time fight then a little bit. Cause a lot's changed since the last time you fought him. Uh, and, and, G Time's brother kind of likes to involve himself in these things, in these things sometimes talking shit online, which was hilarious because last time him and Manny Montreal got into a beef and I fucking died laughing the whole time. It was hilarious. Yeah, well, hey, that's the thing. I I cheer for my guys too. Yeah. So I understand. That's always how it goes. Our team versus your team, like fuck you. If if you're against me, then then this is what it is. Yeah. We're fighting, and my everyone that I'm with is on my side 100 percent, and everyone that he's with is on his side 100 percent. and this is kind of what makes exciting fights because i don't know now there's going to be crowds involved there's going to be people there i'll have a team too i'm not well, I've, I've heard that there's going to be i've heard that there's going to be a small crowd oh shit i don't i i don't know all the details but that's what we're looking at and wow i'm going to get confirmation on that next week from camille yeah, I was gonna say because I don't want to be. I'm not the official <laughs> one. This is just rumors. These are rumors that I heard. Don't take anything that I say official. Quite possibly, uh, yeah. there could be a crowd there. Maybe there might be tickets yeah. for sale. Who knows? Yeah, and how amazing would that be? I miss it. I'll Dude. tell you what, because there is the cool side of being fight fighting in private is kind of cool because if you're if you believe in yourself and you, if your self belief is there and you've done the work, it's quiet. You know what I mean? It's a one-on-one kind of thing. And I've had lots of gym fights, like sparring down south when it was like a fight. It was really like a fight. And there's no audience there. And it's like, 
I, I had some of those that were tougher than my fights. A lot of those were tougher than some of the fights that I had. And it's like, it makes it exclusive and private. There's no lying there. So, you know, I've seen guys, well, G time included who, when I had them going in the, in the, I think it was in the eighth round. I can't remember which round I can't, don't quote me on it, but later in the fight, I had him going and I heard, I saw him and it went G time, G time. And I saw him look and like, it's like you harness the energy because yeah. he heard his guys are cheering. I'm not going down. Everyone's here. And I saw it bring it out of it. And then what happens is when you don't have that, you're very, you're in this weird, quiet place. You're in a really quiet place over here. And that, that that's a tricky spot to be in. But for me personally, I don't mind it because I've had lots of experiences like that. And I'm kind of weird, but it's just the way it is. And then I, I don't think that G time liked it in his last fight. Probably so, not. No, yeah. there, there's two yeah. very different fights that go on in the building when there's no crowd though. There's the fight yep. that's going on in the ring. And then there's the fight between the corners because yeah. I can't just yell out, Hey, Steve, slip the right hand and throw the left. Yeah. I can't yell I that. speak English. Yeah. I can't yell that out. Yeah. So you got, you kind of got to talk in code or wait or be silent and wait until the three minutes is over. And you have that one minute of rest in your corner and start whispering. It's, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah. And that, that's like, you can't exactly you can't be obvious you can't um telegraph your moves uh you can't scream something out when everyone can hear it it doesn't work like that you have to yeah. be smarter than that there's strategies for for using you know there's strat there's strategies to keep things under the water i don't want to tell everything right now because no <laughs> you know right now is what right now that's what i'm doing and what we're doing but in the fight you'll see and they will understand. So we're preparing for that. And I think that that's a major thing. Like you got to prepare for everything. When you go for the fight, you have to prepare for things to go right. Things to go wrong. Things go up and down and you yeah. have to have answers for a lot of things. The more answers you have, the more things you brought in your tool bag, the more um, problems you can solve. So that's why you show up with a full bag. Then you know you're ready. Well, there's a coach in MMA. His name is Trevor Whitman. And uh, for each one of his fighters, he has a game book for them, and they all talk in code. Like nice. he, he's made up codes for every one of his fighters. I, I'm going to say he's probably got 25 professional fighters in his gym, and he's got different code for all of them. It's very interesting. So, yeah. so he, and, and you know what? That, that's the beauty of it because, well, think about for kids, like the little guys, you make up yeah. special punches, you make up special moves. It's, it's exciting. And then what happens is you create – this communication which also like reinforces your team's bond yeah. because you guys are working on stuff that nobody else understands so this is the beauty of being in the gym together and working on stuff together because when you have that connection with your team you can you'll go to war with them because you trust them and i think that's one of the major pieces is is building the connection with your team so yeah make those codes make those special moves you don't want your opponent to know what's going on so you have a special move and then they, they'll never know. And then this is also exciting because it's kind of fun. You yeah. make stuff up in the gym. Yeah. And you always have like special moves. Like it's, that's what I mean. It's fun for the kids, but it's fun for the fighters in general. But well, when you sit down and you, and you look at G time, um, I, I can't, a lot of the questions I want to ask, we can't even fucking answer on this goddamn show because he'll have some English translator that's going to watch this thing and, and tell her, tell him what he says. So. Right. Well, the thing is that you, I'm not, but you don't, you have a game plan, right? You don't expose game plan, but things happen quickly. Yeah. The thing is that my, I've heard it said a million times and I totally believe it. The battle is against yourself. And me right now, I'm, if I'm the best that I've ever been, I know that I'm bringing it. I believe truly that my best at where I'm at right now will beat his best at where he's at right now because I haven't stopped and I'm 
accelerating at full force. And I have compounded all these years of hard, hard work. And now after the last couple of fights, I'm starting to get a new groove. Now I'm starting to understand new things. I'm discovering new things about my own machine yeah. that I never knew. And you can call it athletic prime, but it's also my experience. So it's kind of a pinnacle of the two. And that's where I always tell, like, I always tell fighters, it's like compound interest, compound interest in the bank, compound interest in the gym. The more you do, the exponentially it grows. Like late, later down the road, if you've been doing that consistently for a long time, your acceleration rate, your or your learning rate, your learning curve, accelerate. Like it goes, it goes sharper because you can pick stuff up just by watching it. And I just feel like I'm doing more than Matthews, and I don't focus on him. I'm focused on me, and I'm my battles against myself. So yesterday I trained. I trained. You don't even want to know how much I trained. But today I'm going to beat that. Okay. I'm going to absolutely beat that. And tomorrow's rest day because it's Sunday. But Monday, <laughs> I'm going to beat today. Yeah. And then each day I'm competing with myself. And I think that's how you stay fired up. And that's how you, especially during like weird times like this, stay motivated like that. Battle yourself. Were you sparring last night? Is that what you were doing? I'm sparring today. Today? Okay. Or tonight. Yes. Yeah, tonight. Who, who are you sparring with to get ready for this fight? Um, well, there's pros in the city. Yeah. I, I can work with Jordan McNaughton. I can work with Angelo Habib. I can work with um, Hakeem. I can work with... Uh, I, I move around lots with Bree. Yeah. I work with all the amateur fighters around the scene. I work with some of the heavier uh, pro guys, too. And, like, there's some, like, MMA guys and Muay Thai guys and k1 guys that i spar with too just bigger guys because then you can bang out a little bit yeah i, don't know, I, I work with everyone but I, I i find a way to make it work for me you yeah. know what i mean according to the game plan that we need we we either pre-exhaust the muscles and then see if i can do it in sparring against um like a, a guy who's maybe got less experience than me or maybe i'm doing it against a really tall opponent who's longer range here because now I got to exaggerate all my movements. Yeah. So you find a way to make it hard and make it work for you, regardless of resources. So I have a, a couple of good sparring partners and then I'm making it work with all of the amateur guys and all the other uh, pros that I got in the other fields. So it, it's been fun. I'll tell you that much. It's been fun. Have you ever bring in uh, Devin ready? I haven't seen Devin in a while. Really? Okay. I thought I figured he'd still be running around in Calgary. He is, but I just haven't seen him in a while. I would love to work with them because he's a fast, sharp boxer, but I don't know, man. I think the world has kind of been separated and isolated and it's hard to get going, but it's a weird time. It's a very weird time, especially when uh, a lot of things in your area are shut down. Yeah. Like Alberta's a fucking mess. Yeah, it sucks, man. So it uh, it's got to be tough for you too because you got a you got a big fight coming up. You still need to get in and get groceries, maybe interact with the public on a uh, a lesser level than what normally would be. But you got to take precautions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also insane slightly because <laughs> I've lived a lifetime in training camp. Yeah. So I just said I'm in training camp. Like even since the last fight, like. I kind of, it's weird to say, but like the summer went by and I was just training. Yeah. I was just training. During that time, I didn't have a gym because I was in transitional stage. So I was training outside every day. And then when I got to Legacy, I started training in Legacy every day, every night. And now I'm just on that. And if you just, I'm on tunnel vision. Yeah. And I think that it doesn't matter outside. It doesn't matter what you have or resources you have. If you can, if you can, Stay focused on the task. You know what you're looking for. You're good to go. So I just work inwards. I, I develop my skill because I know wherever I go, there I am. If I'm better here, I'm better there. If I can hit harder in Calgary, I'll hit harder in Quebec City. And that's what I've been working on because right now I'm tapping in, man. I am really, really progressing. And I think the the strength training that I've been doing, the weight, the, you know, like the explosive functional weight lifting that I've been doing over the last couple of years, it's finally coming together. And then um, I'm sure we've talked about it before, but when I was injured one time in the Philippines fight, I herniated a disc, in my back, I, I 
I pinched a bunch of nerves. My my tailbone always had this kind of like I was always offset a little yeah. bit. And then funny enough, I knew it was going to happen eventually if I kept working the legs and kept building it, building it. But it happened recently. And my back kind of it, it actually happened quite abruptly. It was a weird thing. But I was doing a movement and my back popped back into place. And that's a weird thing to say because my injury was about, what, eight years ago? Yeah. So <laughs> this just shows you the progression that I'm looking at here, how gradual it's been. But I knew that something was out of, not out of place. It's just I didn't have connection to a certain it's not right. Like Something's a, just not right. It's a little off. Yes, yeah, it's just not yeah. right. And then I worked on it for years and years and years. And honestly, I've been doing yoga and strength and conditioning and body weight <clears throat> training and like boxing drills and every kind of training that you could ever imagine. And finally, after like eight years of hard work at it, I popped into place one day and I knew I, I like, I don't want to sound weird here, but I had like dreamt that it was going to happen that week. Like I thought about it and it happened. And then now, ever since I have these new legs, like I have, I literally hmm. just watch and see. Like next fight, you'll see. And next, for the rest of my career, you'll see because I feel like I've become more complete of a fighter. And I guess the message is this is why you continue to work on your machine huh. because you'll break through. You'll always break. It's like boxing is a, is a house with no ceiling. It just keeps going up, or it's like yeah. a stairway with no ceiling. And then it's just, you can keep learning new things. And I never knew this. And now all of a sudden I figured out something that I've been working on. I've been doing it for 19 years and I figured out something that I never knew before. That's the beauty <laughs> of it, I guess. So I was going to talk to you about yoga today, actually, because I'm going to implement something new into my training life. And yeah. I don't like yoga. If I'm going to be completely honest, I don't like it. But what I'm going to implement is something called DDP yoga. I've done numerous amounts of research on it the professional football players professional and my first thought was when it was brought to my attention was like this is a fucking moron professional wrestler that made these stupid yoga videos but when you go through and you see that like marshawn lynch tom brady all these people use this in their training aspect like i'm beat up i've had three knee two knee surgeries i need elbow surgeries I have a bad back. I freaking lift over. To, I bend over to pick up a damn laundry basket. And my back goes out. I need to All do right. something. I'm I'm almost forty. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Okay. And the more, the more. This is why I love yoga, and I know not everyone loves like the. And it was hard for me at first too, because I'm a racing mind. So it was really hard for me to like, quiet the mind and just sit still. But the the practice because I had to move and like balance and stuff like that, it became so consuming that i wasn't thinking about that i was thinking about trying to balance like <laughs> on one foot yeah which was a good thing but you have to do prehab so that you can save yourself from rehab yeah so the the more you can work inwards and know your body the the more you can prevent issues and little aches and things going wrong so i'm all for stretching of any kind physio of any kind yeah. um movement i really like this i can't remember what it's called but you have i'm sure you've seen conor mcgregor doing it they have all that movement training and yeah. then they walk and they try and they have like spinal flows and all these weird kind of movements that exercise your body's range of motion yeah and then what happens is you'll send blood flow to that spot that you usually never get blood flow to and that's why I, that's another reason why I like yoga. It's like, I, I never really thought about the back of my left ankle like that. <laughs> but if I put, if I put absolute, you know, pressure, balance, focus on it, now I'm circulating that area. And then when, where blood flows, it, it's like where energy, where, where attention goes, energy flows. It's like where blood flows, your body's attention goes. So to be able to do that, I think it's very, it's good. You prevent a lot of injuries. So like save yourself, do do all that stuff, man. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's very very good a good practice. And you get in touch with yourself, and then you can you can do that when, when you like fight time. You don't want to talk to anybody. You just sit there and stretch, and then all of a sudden time's gone by, and it's fight time before you know. I want you to look at this DDP yoga and give me your thoughts on it because there's an aspect of resistance training while you're doing this yoga too. It's very interesting. 
I I don't know if I've ever seen it before. There's many renditions of yoga practice for all sorts of uh, minds, and it's yeah. so that everyone can fit it. And that, I think that's the beauty of it. So yeah, cool. Yeah, send it my way because I'll try it definitely. I'll send it your way because the 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 guy that invented it is DDP. So it's Diamond Dallas Page, former professional wrestler for uh, I w- remember DDP. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he he invented it. He saved um, Jake the Snake Roberts, uh, Razor Ramon, so uh, Scott Hall. All these guys that have done this DDP yoga, and they're like Jake the Snake's still a fat fuck. It's because he did cocaine and drank too much booze. That's his fault. But at least he's moving. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot, but I want to get your thoughts on it. So I'll send you. I'll send it your way. Yeah, definitely do. And it's good for you, man. Everything that you do that stretches the body and gets the blood flowing, it's good for you. Prevent a lot. If you look at all elderly people who are still living well and feeling good and mobile and active, yeah. they've usually led a lifestyle of the same kind of nature. Active, mobile, Just get outside. You need sunlight. You need yeah. like, so uh, all these practices, the more practices that put you in touch with yourself, the more you know, the the more you know yourself. The you got those forever. Well, when it comes to me personally, uh, and I tell my wife I'm going to go work out, I'm downstairs on a heavy bag for ten rounds. That's my that's my workout, or I'm skipping a rope outside, or I'm doing something like that. But I think I at 38 years old now, I need a little bit of a change of pace. Maybe I can't do that every day of the week. That's a lot of banging around. Well, it's high impact, <laughs> but I mean, well, I'll just. Okay, when I when I have had busted elbows or wrists or hands, I would always do what I would call underwater bag work or underwater shadow boxing. So you just do it in slow motion. Oh, yeah. It's hyper folk it's hyper focus on the movement. But when I'm doing it, I exaggerate the posture. I exaggerate keeping my elbows in completely. I if I see any flare, if I feel any flare, I'm doing it wrong. So it's kind of it's lesser impact but you're still going over it yeah. and then if anything it puts you right in touch like with every single part of the movement so it's a good thing just slow it down but hyper focus i guess you know what else i like i like that reflex ball which one is that Those things you put on your head and it's got the ball and you punch it There's zero impact. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Zero. you know what my only issue is about that it's going right at my eyes <laughs> So at, at one point, I don't know if I like, I don't know, like, I don't know what the, it crossed. If I blink right then, like, I can't, you can't like blink. The thing that I worried about it, I was like, so what? You're not going to blink when something's coming at you, being thrown at your face? Yeah. Like, it's tricky. That, I, that <laughs> thing, I, I like it. I like the idea of it, but I don't know if I like it like using it i've tried it before i mean i'm okay at it i'm not very good i never practiced long but i didn't like that idea but then if something's coming right at me i'm not gonna naturally get out of the way there is a way to do if someone punches at me there is a way that you can use it for slipping and and then you send it that way and cutting corners right so you turn and you send it that that's the one i gotta practice and then i feel like you would like that because you're like the the master of the the, like the fadeaway, oh, the head roll, <laughs> the fadeaway, the, yeah. the the move that gets me points scored against me, yeah. <laughs> hey, but if it saves your brain, it's worth it. It's true. <laughs> and you know what? There's a reason that I'm very rarely banged up after fights. You're like, I may fight on the inside, but I don't get hit as cleanly as a lot of people think. Um, and that I would. You know, I think that comes from lots of rounds, lots of sparring, just because subtle defense doesn't always look the best, but my opponent and I know. And I mean, now I'm working on making it more clear so the judges know because it hasn't always worked in my favor, but my brain's still functioning quite well. So I think I'll take it. I like the fadeaway. You just got to start knocking fools out. Just come back with something. You see Canelo do that? Yeah. Sick. Roll it. Because if the guy has completely missed, his momentum's still going past. If he if you've rolled if you've rolled it and he's going that way and he's coming into the right hook or if you do it the other way coming into the left hook, it's taking their momentum and using it against them. It's like the shoulder roll 
it always was. And it's like the shoulder roll is as hard as you think it is because the guy's throwing his hardest right hand and he, halfway through he gets interrupted by your hardest right hand. Yeah. And if you put it right on his chin, that's a knockout punch. So, again, like that judo thing, you use their own momentum against them. You think they got it, then, or the, you make them think that they've got it, then you flip it on them. Well, the last time we talked, again, we're going to go back to that, but uh, you did the weird peyote DMT, whatever the fuck it was. You you seen Met Your Maker. you seen the devil. Are you still riding high off of that experience? Is it still making an impact in your life? It was... It's an experience that I can go to if I ever need to. Okay. And that that's that's why it was so weird because it's not like something that I just oh it's like oh a crazy time that it's like no I I I go there I can go there and then I go there for a bit and it's like in my meditation and stuff I can do it it's something it's like a connection I made a pathway that connected me to myself and I know that pathway now. And I think that that's how I would describe it. So if I ever need to meditate or when I'm doing my yoga, I'll often kind of fall into there and forget where I'm at and go into my own mind and just think for a while. It's a peaceful place. So, yeah, I absolutely still have it because I connected with myself in a way that is kind of it's probably not a lot of people can connect that way because it's a different it's a different form. That's for sure. But um, now I always have that. So I'll, often I'll do yoga and I can tap into it. I'm meditating and tap into it. And you better believe when it's fight time on fight week, I tap into it. Okay. And I sit there in my room and I manifest and I visualize and I remember what I've been doing. And I focus and create and I, I can go in there and I can go to a deep place in my own mind. And my connection with self is bringing me confidence going forwards. And I think that... Um, you know, it is it is what you do. It is not a, you can have every tool in the book, but if you don't use it, it's useless. So I just watch what I can do with it. Pretty much. Would you do it again? Uh no, I don't think I need to. You're good. But yeah, I don't think I need to. So I'm. If they if if, if my like spirit, if one day it came up, my. I felt the draw, like oh, I had answers about life or questions about life that I don't, I don't know. Maybe, but I, I don't need to. That was, that was like the beauty of it because sometimes people will do something like that, and then they they're like, "When can I do it again?" And that's the addictive personality, right? We're like, yeah. "Oh well, I I I got high. Now I got to get high again. Let's get high tomorrow. Oh, I got drunk. Let's get drunk tomorrow." But I think part of the the thing about me is when I was young, I was a little bit crazy. So I experienced a lot of things early and I don't need that. I don't need that. I experienced it once and I don't ever need it again. And um, we'll see what the future holds, I guess. But I think also I had an interesting side note, an interesting conversation with my friend the other day. And he said, Americans 21, everything's legal. Canadians 18 everything's legal yeah and he's like so if everything's legal at 18 you're probably dabbling at like 16 that's just the way (laughs) things go and then by the time you get 18 it's like you know like you'll celebrate there but but you know you go hard for a a year or whatever it's like by the time you get 21 it's not the main focus of everything yeah whereas if you have waited and waited 18 you still can't 19 20 like when i get to 21 i'm gonna go crazy I think that that big drop off creates a little bit of an issue. (laughs) Like it it creates the planes for potentially a little bit of an issue. So when kids experience stuff early, myself included, things like, um, you know, I don't know how to explain it, like conscious enhancing apparatuses, like things that take you to a different state of consciousness has a different effect. 100% I'm, not looking, I'm not looking at it like that anymore. Well, I went nuts from like 15 until 25, 26. Right. And right. it's really hard to try to explain to the younger generation that it's really not all that cracked up. To, it, it's not that great. <laughs> no, because – so, yeah. Well, because, well, here's my – here. here's something I think. Substance is only that. It's exactly that. Right. Substance. When it wears off, it's over. 
So all the fun is over. And then if you want more, you got to go get more substance. So that cycle, it's mm. never going to fulfill you because it's always going to have an end. And then you want to start it again. But then you're in that empty spot where you don't have anything. So you're creating this this really um, self-fulfilling cycle, which kind of that's where a lot of people get trapped in it. Yeah. So I would say just keep that in mind and just don't expect any solution because of it. It's just it goes around. Just remember that it keeps going around. I see. Uh, I see Mike Tyson nowadays. He owns the big weed ranch, but I see him doing interviews and he's just ate five grams of mushrooms. Or because he does those DMT trips once a month, or he smoked yeah. half a pound of weed that day. Like, I'm sorry, sir, but I know that you it's were best. high on cocaine six months ago, and you're off that now. But now you're just supplementing with natural stuff, and it, there's really no difference to what you're. You're eating five grams of mushrooms a day. That's a fucking problem. Yeah, you can't. You don't need to alter your consciousness that much. He does though. When people- He's a- yeah, and then that, that's the problem. It's an addictive personality. He yeah. himself has also said that, right? Yeah. And that sucks. But recognizing that, you should be able to adjust. The only thing is he has the loophole because he's saying, well, the weed's not you know, a drug or, or yeah. mushrooms are not a drug. It's like, well, state-altering, consciousness-altering substance is pretty much a drug. That's what it is. And then it's tough because like anything else – it's going to run away with you and then hopefully, hopefully you find some balance. Cause you know, and he's got a good network nowadays. Life is not like it once was for him. So maybe he has oh. a better team. Right. He's got family level head. Hopefully, hopefully, figures hopefully, it out. hopefully you know. it all levels yeah. out. Um, right. There's something you said multiple times over the last couple of days. And it's the mind of a psychopath. You, you think you're legit crazy right now? Well, when you <laughs> when you <laughs> when you get ready for a fight, there's one thing on your mind, and you focus and you focus and you focus. Um, psychopath, no. Tunnel vision, yes. Um, dragon vision, maybe. Something that. Um, That's a t-shirt. I'm just fired up, man. I'm just really fired up because I wanted this fight for two years and I've been creating it and I've been like thinking about it. And I felt, I felt like I didn't get a fair shake the first time. So I want to get it back and crushed all my momentum and that hurt bad and things were, it doesn't matter. The past doesn't matter. It just, just know that I have tons of fire in the tank and momentum is like in my favor because I'm pushing it. And now I, you know, I just, I'm coming off of a win and I, I know I can make the weight, right. I know how to do the, the weight cut. I know how to do the better than ever, by the way, I made weight because of Declan, my nutritionist yeah. fight to be fit, man. I mean, I was on weight the night before. Really? I never had that. Wow. I never had that. And you know what? I also felt amazing the whole way through. And then I'm sure we've talked about this one before, but legs to a table, the nutritionist, Declan, my guy, yep. trust me, if you can get a nutritionist who who knows what they're doing, who is in the your sport or your expertise, do it. Yep. Because everything that you put in your body, your fuel is what, you know, what comes out as well. So I feel like I have a, a balanced table and I feel like um, my vision is kind of guiding Everybody else has visions that are looking right at the same thing. We're all kind of looking <laughs> at the same goals. We all have similar goals aligned on the exact same path. And I think that that's the team that you want around you. So now just watch and see the show. Uh, right now is an interesting time for boxing because there's not a lot of shows and a lot of Canadian guys are pissed off and they want to fight. Yeah. Um, you're one of the very fortunate ones that does yeah. get to fight. Um, we're trying to make a fight right now. Dylan Carmen versus Adam Braidwood. Those two right. want to fight each other bad. I know. They're always going back and forth. <laughs> Which is, I love that. I love that. So I'm hoping that uh, that Camille and the Tigers will put that on because they actually have Simon Keane versus Stanley Cermak on the same event as you. Um, 
two months before this event was announced, I actually posted something where I wanted Simon Keane to fight Stan Cermak and Adam Braidwood to fight Dylan Carmen, a kind of a mini heavyweight tournament, and then the winners fight for the Canadian title. Right. I think Beautiful. that's something. I think that's something Camille could do. Oh yeah, he could. Yeah. Oh yeah, he could. And then look at the Canadian boxing scene. Under the under the waves, things are moving and moving and moving. And yeah, that would be awesome. And that would be a triple header. Yeah, man, it'd be awesome. Right? Some of the best can and when you can only fight in in the in country, put the best against the best. Yeah, there, there's another terrifying guy that's out in Cape Breton right now that's chomping at the bit for a fight, and that's Ryan Rizicki. Ryan, yeah, my buddy. He's a nasty motherfucker, man. I really like Ryan. Yeah, and this one's tricky because I hear that he wants to fight Ryan Ford. And I really like that Ryan too. Me too. So <laughs> that one's that's where it's like may the best man win. I I love you guys both. The fighters are fighters, man. But uh Ryan Rizicki, I like his fire. I yeah. like that he's just he's an old school beast. You know what I mean? Like he goes hard. He likes Dempsey, he likes uh, like yeah. That's the kind of guy that you want to watch in the ring because they bring exactly what you think he's going to bring. Firepower and lots of it and heart and he's coming for it. I'd love to fight on the same show as Ryan one day too. It'd be awesome. I, I have a hard time with the Ryan Ford, Ryan Rizicki thing. Because I've known Ryan Ford since 2007. We're training partners, spar yep. together. There's Great a hi- guy. There's a history there. He's an amazing guy, amazing father, amazing just amazing human being. And then just recently over the last couple of years, I've been, I've been in contact with Ryan Rizicki. He's been on the show multiple times. He's actually going to be coming on again after Camille. Nice. But uh, it's tough. Another great guy. He's, he's an awesome dude too. And he's an amazing fighter. But my problem with the fight, I'd love to see the fight. I won't, I won't lie. I'll watch it. Or I'm, 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 I'm not making picks. Not happening, so don't ask I'm me. I'm not, yeah, I know. May the best man win, and I love you both, so fuck, do your thing. But Ryan Rizicki is a lot bigger than Ford. Yeah. Ryan Ford's 5'11". Ryan Rizicki's 6'2". Uh, Ford Ford makes 168 very easily now. Right. Where he, he is cutting weight, I, I won't lie. Um, 175 probably be something he could walk into. Right. Um, where, where where Ryan Rizicki, cutting. he's not cutting anything to make cruiserweight. He just walks in at 195 and fights. Oh, okay. All right. So, so there there's a size be... discrepancy as, as long. Yeah. As, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I, in that aspect, I don't want to see the fight because Ford's gonna have to put on size, or yeah. Rizicki's gonna have to come down to 175, where I think the fight could be a little more even. Yeah. If they do a catch, yeah, if they do a catch weight and they both have to bend a little bit, yeah, because that would be, you know, that's always a thing. It's like one side usually has the the leverage, and they're like, "Well, I actually wanted it at my weight." So, yeah, cruiser like, well, cruiser yeah, weight's too big. Yeah, and it, well, that's the uh, that's for some meet in the middle. Yeah, and I'm all for it. I'll watch two of my buddies fight, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, fighter, fighters and fighters. If you know what fighters fight. Because that's something that I learned a long time ago. I used to like, I didn't want my buddy to fight that guy. Like I didn't, those, like, but we're fighters, man. Yeah. And just kind of, you get in and how many times you fight someone and become friends after. Exactly. Most of my friends I punched in the face. I punched most of my friends in the <laughs> face. <laughs> in fact, some of my best friends I have mm. pummeled. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> many many times for many many years and you know what that's part of the love we go back and forth and, and uh, even when i was a kid it was like that beat each other up and yeah well luke spicer you... is a great example right i broke his ribs i broke his nose he's beat the <laughs> shit out of me a couple times like it's just <laughs> that's what that's it is that's a real friendship it's real friendship uh yeah, at braidwood we we've we fought we sparred right and it's like because We've been against each other. You've seen my honest. That that was a thing I noticed about fighting someone. You've seen my honest effort of everything that I've got. So there's like a sense of respect after, and you're like, yeah, yep. Yeah, <laughs> and like, oh, that was uh, appreciate that, man. That was good. You fucked me up a little bit. Or, or <laughs> oh, I caught you there. You know what I mean? Like, remember when I did that? Like, and then 
that's the beauty. That's the camaraderie. I mean, we're all fighters, man. We we you hate each other while you're fighting. Yeah, maybe you don't even think about it. We don't hate. Any, it's not like that. I'm just trying to kill you. I'm not. I don't hate you. I'm just trying to kill you for like 11 seconds. And then after that, I want you to be totally fine. We can be buddies. And then I wish you the best in life. And it's like the ability to separate boxing from real life is a really important skill. And that's also the beauty of it to be able to like, you go to the gym, go machine mode, man, go on kill mode, be a warrior. That's where you vent. That's where, like, that's where I got put into boxing when I'm a kid. Yeah. Cause I'm an aggressive little, I fight everyone all the time. So then it's like vent it here and stop doing that. And then it worked. Now I have not only a vent, but I have a, a career. I have a life. I have a passion. I have a dream. I have a vision. And this is where I put all of my, everything that I've got, my heart's here. And then here's my life. And we so we have fun. And don't get me wrong, my heart's here with my family and my friends and stuff. But the ability to separate the two, that's how you balance it. It's like you're not going to sprint every day. You're not going to lift, max out your, your squat every day. You give some, you know, balance. You have to let it grow. You have to let it recharge so that you can hit it even harder next time. Same with that. Oh, there's a little guy I sparred with when I lived in Red Deer a couple times, and uh, I always respected him as a fighter and a human being. But after I sparred with him, I respected him a whole hell of a lot more, and that was Cam O'Connell. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. He's Very a... nice, Cam. Slick and fast. Oh, man, he's good. Uh, so the, I, I hit him one time. I blew his nose up all over his face right off the hop. And then he proceeded to beat the shit out of my body for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, well, uh, fast, quick, speedy. It, it, like when I'm a younger kid, I only have taller, bigger sparring partners. So I learned how, like, okay, advantage that I have against the big guy. I can't bang it out with him or I'm in trouble. Yeah. But if I stick in close, he can't quite hit me with his long arms. Or if I use my speed, he can't keep up. And Cam's one of Cam's has. How many fights? Like hundreds, hundreds, yeah, man. hundreds of fights. He had 50 fights when I started. When I first fought him, I fought him in the amateur. Yeah. He had 50 fights. I was on my like not, eighth, I think, eighth fight. And I was like, this guy, man, he's experienced. <laughs> and so when you have that much compound interest, same thing. He's yeah. been running those drills. He's been learning tricks of the trade the whole way. So Cam's one of the most experienced fighters that I know for sure. Like, well, around here, absolutely. So he's a good guy to work with. Yeah, man. I cracked him with the jab right off the start, and then he just sat on the inside and duck and hook. I couldn't get him off me. Like the only stick to you like glue. And we were boxing, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna take him down. <laughs> like, yeah. What, what am I gonna do? And he's so small. He's just down yeah. here, and I'm just I'm trying to push him off, and he's slipping me off and doing all this other bullshit and then hammering me in the liver motherfucker you know what that's it's funny because i feel like i'm talking to like my old spar partners must have said the same thing about me yeah when i went because well so put it this way when you're the smaller guy if you get in too close for the bigger guy to get his shots off he will be frustrated because yeah. he can't get his arms his stature his you know like He's too big to hit across here. So you can find these little spots in there where you can get too close for, for um, you're in too close. You're not in firing zone anymore. Yeah. So Cam, with all the experience that he has, has definitely sparred with a bunch of big guys. Mm. And then he, he did that. That's that old trick. <laughs> yeah, it was like he had uh, a piece of Velcro stuck to his forehead and it was stuck to my sternum because that's where he sat the whole time. I couldn't move him. It's exhausting if you're not used so to tired. the, right? Because, well, your tension, I think that's another thing. Because, so I'm sparring the other day with one of my guys at the gym. And he's much bigger than me. But if I stick to him, I can hear him. I can hear him yeah. tense like he's not <laughs> relaxing. So I'll just, I'll just stick to him and do, like, I'll just touch, touch, movement, movement. But he's wasting his energy, burning it up with tension you have to practice on the inside so that that doesn't happen when you get in there you have to be able to relax the muscles relax still got to be sharp you still got to 
be quick and reactive, but you have to have relaxed muscles or else you're not going to be able to um, go for a long, you know, you won't have many rounds in the bank if you're too tense. So it's good. It's always good. Out of your comfort zone is always good. And then I guess Cam put you there for a couple rounds. It's yeah, nice. Mother, motherfucker. But I did <laughs> learn, I did learn how to not ever get there ever again. So, you do? so for the guys that are out there and you got these smaller guys stuck on the inside, throw a hook, but don't turn it over and put your goddamn forearm down on the on the back of their head and push them down. And then yeah, just, smother them. just smother them like that. Put your arms out and use your chest. Put them down and then walk away. Smother them? <laughs> smother them, yeah. Hey, but be careful with this one. <laughs> I throw punch. I throw punches in the clinch, man. Somebody do that one. I'm, I'm gripping the liver at least twice. Uh, <laughs> as soon as that forearm comes down and you push the head down, oh, you then, fold it. Then you fold them up. Yeah. And then you're, yeah. Then you're gone. Yeah. And then okay, c- counter, <laughs> counter. I'm the smaller guy. I'm gonna advance with one of my feet and pivot off immediately. Even from a low, low. If I was being pressed on on my back yeah. i can still make that that pivot so you just need to step that whichever side you're going if you go right you step with the right foot if you go left you step with the left foot and then you crank the pivot real hard and you get out from underneath somebody weighing on your back especially if their arms give you the the opening to get under but i mean this is just just fight tactics maybe the next time i go to calgary steve and i'll we'll do this on video yeah we can we'll run that. some drills. Yeah. Dude, right now. Okay, well, here, I, I was like, do I want to say, I'm like, do I want to say this? Or Yeah, I do. Right now, I'm, I'm doing lots of uh, clinching and grappling. Yeah, you, you know why? Be. Yeah, because Jermaine grabs yeah. and he ties up. So I'm going to have an answer for that. And I don't care if he hears this because I'm training with b- big jujitsu guys you know what i mean like i'm training the right stuff that's good so when we get in there yeah grapple me we'll see what happens and again exaggerating a part of the fight that i know i'm gonna have to do so i'm preparing for it and so i prepare you know a little bit extra i I wrestle with like bigger guys or i wrestle with you know fighters who know that art i don't know anything about doing this until now you know, uh, I know how to clinch. I know how to break a clinch. I know how to turn out of a clinch. I know, but I don't know the arm control and all this stuff. But now I do. I know a little bit. So all boxers I'm, I'm should wrestle. To my game. All boxers should go to wrestling. Yeah, because that's part of the game. You need to part know how it. to do that stuff. No, I'm not talking about. Don't go to Olympic wrestling. I think Greco-Roman wrestling would probably be the best, where there's a lot right. of wall work and a lot of stand-up clinching and grappling. Stand and yeah, stand-up clinching. Yeah, because it's part of the game. Going to the ground is a waste of time. Yeah, because you're not going to. No. I mean, you could do it for fun later, if, but not gonna not gonna help you. No. But standing up, you're going to have to grapple at some points because someone's gonna clinch you inevitably mm-hmm. in times in your career. It happens. So have an answer for it. You don't want to show up with missing that key. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you got to show up with all of them. So. Um, I yeah, another you're... another little thing connected to the same thing. Yeah, you should you should know that trick too. Are you doing it with gloves on? Yeah. Yeah. I no. I well, I both both. That's good though. I'm I was going to say you should. Yeah. But... Throw your gloves on and and because it's a different feel, right? Like at least yeah. with your with your hands, you can kind of pummel in and get into weird spots. With yeah. gloves, you're going to have to find a different way to get in, whether you come up and out, or you find a hole and go down and in. But. Yeah, one of my one of my guys, we will um, spot like we'll spot. We're, we're just boxing, sparring. Yep. But he's this motherfucker will grab and grab. He's my good friend, right? <laughs> so it's funny. But he will grab and headlock and pull. And he's bigger than me, so he's always we're sparring and he'll do this. So it's perfect practice because we're especially with the headgears. I grab my headgear and stuff. But this is what creates. This is what creates. Um exaggerated training yeah exaggerated training man so yeah we're, we're incorporating grappling in sparring so we're putting it all together and make covering all the angles all boxers should stand up wrestle that's my personal yeah, feeling yeah. on it yeah and, and then it would be good because think about the guy who doesn't 
Think about the advantage you can create because you go against a guy who's never done it before. Exactly. And this is why I think Ben Askren is going to whip the shit out of Jake Paul. Oh, uh, I hope <laughs> that he does. <laughs> Just think about well, it, though. If Ben Askren's an Olympic wrestler, he's a, a multi-time world champion in MMA as a grappler. If he grapples with Jake Paul for three rounds, that little boy ain't going to have arms left. No, he'll be exhausted. Exhausted. I, I'm so no oh man. And I, I hate bringing it. I hate bringing it up, but it's reality. Well, it's to- hey, it's a topic, and like like even before with the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight, yeah. it brings a lot of people into the the idea of boxing. But how <sighs> many celebrities are boxing now? I mean, at least McGregor I- was a legitimate fighter. Yeah. The, th- the thing that I don't like about is when they kind of shit on other fighters, and, you know, act yeah. like it's so easy. I saw this thing with Jake Paul saying that, like, YouTube's harder than boxing. And I'm like, YouTube is harder than boxing? I mean, that, like, that literally can't make sense because there's no, there's no, there's, it literally can't make sense because there's no, like, output required for youtube it's like intellectual oh you have to think well then you can just think more tomorrow and think more tomorrow physically you would run out of juice like it, it, it's not even comparable it doesn't even make sense but that's where the entitled guys get gifted a lot of things and that's where you're hoping and i'm hoping and we're all hoping that ben Askren beats the shit out of him yeah and checks this guy for following people's wives and <laughs> comments and about people's girlfriends and stuff like man promo for the fight is all he knows and then that was like i remember mcgregor talking about that he's like well he got too caught up in the promo and then well here's a message for fighters another one i have been there before when i was so caught up in what's happening before the fight oh if we do if he does this i'm gonna do this if he does that i'm gonna do that his team did this oh the promo we got to do this interview we got I almost was so focused on that stuff that I forgot that if I double jab in, I'll be able to land the right hand. Right. If I hit him with the uppercut and lift the head up, I'm going to clean it up with the hook. I forgot roll after my, I forgot these tactical things and I got too caught up in the hype. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, nowadays half of the game is hype, which is a weird, weird thing. Right. It's something, it's something guys need to learn though, because like, Mind games are a definite weapon in combat sports. Yep. If I can take you out of the fight before we even start, yeah, it's, it's probably yeah. a really good thing to happen. Yes, but at the same time, <laughs> what about when you run into someone who is stoic? That's why you need to have doesn't... multiple weapons. Yeah, and you got to learn them all, right? And because that can ha- happen too. Someone will say something to a fighter, and the fighter goes. Nothing. And then the guy, and then the guy's like, uh, and then he's like, why, he, wait, maybe I should have said this instead. Maybe I shouldn't have said, this. now he's, now his own weapon has just been rebounded back at him because the other guy was prepared for it. And then that's where it's a weapon, but you can't rely on that stuff. Cause again, all the antics, Floyd special, all the, all the, the pre hype, pre fight hype and all that stuff. That's not the fight. And I think that Floyd was one of the best because all the talking's done now. He'll promote the show, but when it's time to fight, all the talking's done. The fight now, it's the fight now. And then same again, McGregor fight again at the press conference before the fight. You see McGregor still yelling, screaming, talking, doing, and Floyd's like this. Yeah. And if you go back and watch that, that's where you have to be focused on the task at hand. You can promote the fight, but that's not the fight. Well, guys that do that, they need to realize when they do run into a fellow like that, and then you just stop and say, "Okay, we're fighting. It's over. Yeah. We're fighting." Yeah, that's what. And that, then that's what needs to happen. If somebody does that to you, yeah, and if somebody does that to you, you just get good at doing this one. Exactly. You know what I mean? Some non-reactive say that. Oh, yeah. Well, you did this, and your 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 mom did this, and your family, and your gym, and your di-, and you sit there and you go. <laughs> like uh, I've got to make weight, get out of my way, and then you just, like no reaction. Exactly. And then you can you can spin that on them, but also you keep your own peace of mind. So I think that's that's the best way to do it. 
All right, Steve, let's do fan questions. I had some questions come in for you. One of them is actually for both of us, and then we'll wrap this fucking thing up. Uh, First question is for both of us. Who do you guys think is the best boxer on the planet right now? Oh, man, there's so many. It's like, well... It's tough because the, the 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 weight disparity. So now the heavyweight division is jumping. Yeah. But I've always been a fan of the lighter weight classes because of the the speed and technique and oh, man, like uh, you got a Canelo's up there because mm-hmm. he has the experience because he can change it up and fight. And like I, I, I guess I have to say Canelo because he's been he's been the most weight classes, he has the most skills. He's got a, a perfect record, other than losing to Floyd at the time when he learned a hard lesson in the game, and now he's cleaning up and he's knocking out guys. He's knocking out Kovalev. He, he he's knocking out Kovalev. He's knocking out um, who was that? Calm Smith. He's not like man. He's on a tear. And I, I'll say Canelo. I have two um, because I don't think the heavyweights can be compared to the lighter weights. Yep. Just by body size. Uh, Tyson Fury is definitely uh, number one pound for pound just because he's 270 pounds. Um, as, right. for the, as for the lighter weights, I would go with Terrence Crawford over uh, yep. Canelo. Ah, right. And he's seeing Bud's the other guy that I was going to say as well <laughs> because you nobody's know, beating him. And nobody he, and wants to fight him. Yeah, nobody wants to fight him. He's got a game plan for everybody. You know what I love about Bud is his team. And they're just such a good – I actually met Bud in uh, Denver. Okay. Uh, when I, yeah, when I fought on the Top Rank show. And then, man, it, just to watch him progress from there. And I remember seeing him and I was like, this guy's like small, man. He's like small yeah. as me. <laughs> and now he's in, and he's like knocking out Kel Brook. Right? Kel Brook's a motherfucker. Right, like uh, I mean, cleaning up. He's he's beating everybody. He's beating everyone they put in front of him. It's hard to it's hard to deny. Crawford's up there, definitely. So the my only argument for Bud Crawford is Canelo's knocking out guys that are kind of on like Kovalev's been beat. He right. the I get it, you knocked him out, but realistically, the guys had 157 fights, right? And he he was at the he already lost the title, right. He's already been knocked out. Callum Smith. Who the fuck is Callum Smith? Good, good fighter. Good jab. Yeah. But when you when you fight a guy that is good at fighting on his heels, is very beatable. Yeah. The other the other one I, I thought about was Tiafimo Lopez because I really like that kid. Yeah, he's good, man. Actually, I was going to do the camp with Teofimo um, a year ago. I was going to go be a sparring partner and work with him. Um, hopefully, that one's still open because I'd love to do that in the future, too. But, yeah, Teofimo, man, and what a win. <laughs> what a win. Statement. Yeah. Face the boogeyman and beat him up. I always had an issue with Lomachenko, though. I never liked him. Well, Teofimo handled that one for you. <laughs> I I just I had an issue with it because it just felt like he was handed some stuff after eight fights or four fights or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Like I get you had five hundred fights as an amateur, but when you get brought into a division as a professional and your second fight in, you're fighting for a world title. Yeah, well, this is a promotional move, right? When yeah. they see the guy that they see a potential future investment in, they're gonna back him, and then. I guess that's why you got to make yourself look uh, marketable, look like a good investment for <laughs> yeah. all the fighters. And that's how, that's how you do it, man. Because that's, if you look valuable, if you are, if you're valuable in the market, well, you can fight for a world title in your second fight. I guess that that's what happened there. So whether that's, I mean, don't get me wrong. He earned it with three ninety six and one, I believe his amateur record was yeah. 396 and one. And then, that's a hell of a lot of work. So he earned it in his sense that way. But in the pros, yeah, it came quick. It came really, really quick. And then it's one of those guys. But 
he got it so quick. Maybe that was part of his demise as well. I, I mean, think he's so, still yeah. not done. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's like, whoa, he's the best. No one will ever beat him ever, 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 ever. He's the best fighter. He's a pound for pound great. And, and it's like, whoa, whoa, hang on. Hang well, on. One, 135 is not his weight class either. 130 is. He's too small. He's too small. Well, that's the, yeah. And that's the hard part with being a great fighter. Because if you're good, everyone's like, go up a weight class. Then. Fight yeah. that guy, actually. <laughs> it's like, but that guy's 20 pounds heavier. It's like, yeah. yeah, you're so good, right? Beat him. Next question. Um, you've always shown recovery stuff on the podcast. What's your number one tool right now for recovery? Last night, I did an Epsom salt, hot, hot, hot CBD bath. Okay. Okay. But I have a shower right next to my bathtub, so I'm lucky. And I do a cold shower for one minute, and then I warm back up in the Epsom salt bath. And then I go back and I do cold shower. So I do a hot, cold flush. Okay. But I make sure my my cold increases. So I do one minute. The next time it's a minute 30. Then it's two minutes. And then I go up to a one round. So three minutes. And then the hot, cold, hot, cold seems to really release a lot of toxins and stuff out of my tissue. And then after that, I stretch. I do my yoga. And I just I pair the two. And I drink tea while I'm at it. I mean... I'm pretty much a, um, a yogi at that point. <laughs> uh, next question is from a female listener. Are you single? I'm single. Yes, <laughs> I am. I, uh, I'm, I'm married to the boxing game is what I am right now. <laughs> uh, next question is from me. Are you sponsored by Perfect Sport? Oh, for, for you to me. Yeah. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Shout out Perfect Sports. And they they are now sponsoring myself and Bree. Awesome. And what a – this is something that I always wanted. Now we're working with a huge a team. You know what I mean? Like it, I, I never had – I never had fuel. Like I always had fire, but I never had the fuel. <laughs> it's very cheesy to say, but it's true. And, I, you know, I, when you have to pay for all your stuff. It's expensive. Again, I'm not complaining. It's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, when you gotta buy all your stuff and do everything and you pay for all your everything, it's tough. It's a lot. Things add up. So the well, more the, you can work with, work with great team like Perfect Sports. I'm lucky, man. I've been using Perfect Sport supplements for probably the last three years. Here's a cheap plug for them, but Perfect Sport BCA is in here right now. Nice. And they taste awesome. They taste awesome. Uh their yeah. diesel protein is amazing. Probably the yeah. best and cleanest protein on the market. Uh, yeah. And they have another product that I use. It's called Onset. It's a nootropic, which is fantastic. Yep. So, um, shout they out to have, Perfect Sports. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Perfect Sports. They got a bunch of great stuff, and, and they're continuous. There's, like, more stuff coming out. They just came out with new pre-workouts and new this and new that. So, I mean, it's a company on the rise, and it's, like, it's growing right now. So it's always nice to be involved in the momentum process as we're building we're building i probably spent ten thousand dollars in the last couple of years on perfect sport products so if you guys want to hit me up yeah, hit them up <laughs> <laughs> a happy customer yeah it's fantastic stuff it's great um last question what does being signed to eye of the tiger mean to you at this point in your career everything being signed with Ida Tiger is the best thing that ever happened to my boxing career. Um, even today, I messaged Emmanuel to say, make sure to tell your dad, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Camille. Because he's the first guy in the boxing game who didn't come from, like, like he wasn't someone that I, like, grew up beside, or, like, knew, but he believed in me. And he still believes in me. And he says that I can do it. He knows that I... Like he he witnessed, he knows my fire, I guess that is, and he has belief in me. So working with Eye of the Tiger, it's amazing because they're the biggest in the country, they're the best, they got the world champions, they have the most reach, the most power, the most leverage, the biggest fan base. Like it's amazing. But for me personally, working with Camille is awesome because it's someone that I really trust. It's someone that I I want to like I'm like, well, watch and see how good I can be. You want to do work for I, him. Like, He makes you yeah, want to work. Think, yeah, I get it. Exactly. So it, make, it motivates me because I want to show him how good I can be. So 
thank you to Camille and I, the Tiger. Watch us, watch how far we take it these next couple of years. I think it's going to be very, very exciting. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Steve, do you want to thank anybody? Sponsors, all that nonsense? I want to thank Perfect Sports because they, <laughs> they are saving me while they are creating the beast. They're creating the beast. They saved me from a lot of hassle that I used to always have to do. And now watch and see the monster that I've become. I want to say thank you to um, all the fans, just fans, man. Watch and see it, especially all the, the Quebec fight fans who are now starting to like. They're coming over. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just. When, it's like, oh, you guys love fighting? I love fighting. Oh, you guys love watching fights? I love fighting, putting it all on the line. And I think that I'm starting to get kind of accepted, appreciated. So thank you to all the fans because um, it, it means everything to me. And I can't wait to have another fight with all the fans in there and we can do it all over again. Hopefully we got some in there next time. Uh, just let's see how far we can grow. All right, guys, April 17th. Make sure you subscribe to punchinggrace.com. It's $11 a month, and you'll be able to watch Steve the Dragon Claggett versus Matthew Germain on there. Subscribe. Hit Steve up. It's S Dragon C on Instagram. Send him some love on there and uh, cheer him on. Guys, that's the final shot.